In a previous video featuring black pen, red pen, we talked about how to find an explicit formula for the square roots of a complex number. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find nth roots in general, and in particular, we'll see the example of finding fourth roots of the complex number 1 plus i. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof. Omar, and today we're interested in finding a way to compute the nth roots of complex numbers, and in particular, we'll apply it to this particular problem right over here. Now to start, I want to talk about how complex numbers are usually represented. So usually you write a complex number z as a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. And if we plotted this in the complex plane, it would look something like this. We'd have the real axis here, the imaginary axis here, and our number is like somewhere over here, a plus bi. Okay, there's another way to write complex numbers actually. So instead, we can think about the length of this vector emanating from the origin, I'll call that r, and then the angle that this vector makes with the real axis, which I'll call theta. Now, it turns out then that this length here is by trigonometry, r cosine theta, and this is r sine theta. And so we can write this complex number as r cosine theta plus i r sine theta. This is sometimes called the polar form of a complex number, and there's this nice representation of this as an exponential, writing as r e to the i theta. e here is the e that we know and love from calculus. And the equality of e to the i theta with cosine theta plus i sine theta is called Euler's formula. So we're going to exploit that in this video. Okay, so I've placed the different representations of a complex number right over here. Now let's think about the question of finding the nth roots of a complex number. So say we have a complex number z, and we're interested in solving the equation x to the n equals z, where n is a fixed positive integer. So first of all, there are most n roots to this particular equation for a fixed z. And the reason is because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, which states that if you have a degree n polynomial, it has at most n distinct roots. So if we can find n complex numbers that satisfy this equation, then we're happy. Now let's write this z that we have in polar form. So it's r e to the i theta. And then let's think about complex numbers that would actually satisfy this equation. So one example is to take the nth root of r and then the nth root of this thing right over here. And there are choices, but we'll start with one that seems more accessible than the others. If we set x to be the nth root of r times e to the i theta over n, right? Then when we raise this to the nth power, we'll get an r and we'll get here e to the i theta by multiplying exponent, the exponent by n. So this is one of the complex roots of this thing. So there are n minus one roots left and we wonder what are they? Okay, so how do we find all of the other n minus one roots? Well, let's think about what's going to happen here. When we take a particular root of this equation, we raise it to the nth power to get this quantity right over here. Okay, but this quantity here is actually unchanged if we multiply it by e to the power of i times a multiple of 2 pi. Here I've written just 2 pi here. Um, and the reason is because if we think about what e to the i times 2 pi is, using this polar form, this is cosine 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi, and this is 0, and this is 1. So this would be multiplying by 1. Okay, so if we think about doing that just with e to the 2 pi i, we can apply the similar process that we did earlier and say, hey, we'll take the nth root of r and multiply by e to the exponent i times 1 over n times the angle we have here, which is now theta plus 2 pi. So I'm going to write that as theta over n, our original angle, plus 2 pi over n. So that way when we raise this to the n, we get r times e to the i theta plus 2 pi, right? And the e to the i 2 pi will become this piece right over here, which is 1. Okay, but we can do this with other multiples of 2 pi as well. If we replace this with 4 pi, we'd also get that e to the 
i times 4 pi is 1. So we can set x to be the nth root of r times e to the i times theta over n plus 2 pi over n times 2. And we get another root. And we can do this again by multiplying the 2 pi over n by 3. And if we raise this to the n, we'll get r e to the i theta times e to the i times 6 pi, which is again 1. Okay, so we can keep doing this until we get a bunch of multiples, the last one being e to the i theta over n plus 2 pi over n times n minus 1. Okay, cool. So we notice then that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, n total roots. And since this thing has at most n roots, these are all the roots. So that's fantastic. We have a way to write down what these roots actually are. But of course, we want to write down these as complex numbers that we can see maybe in uh, our, the regular form that we are used to seeing complex numbers in. Um, so we'll have to transfer to that afterward. So let's actually take a look at what this looks like in a particular example, finding the fourth roots of 1 plus i. To guide us, I've actually written explicitly the nth roots of a given complex number. So let's start with this number z, which is 1 plus i. And the first step is to actually write it in this polar form. So to do that, we'll draw it in the complex plane. We move one over in the real direction and one over in the imaginary direction. And so we have this number right over here as our number z. The length of this vector, because this length is one and this length is one, by Pythagorean theorem is root two. So this is root two e to the i times some angle. That angle is this angle right over here. Um, and since these lengths are equal, this angle is actually pi over four, it's 45 degrees. Okay, so that's what our original complex number is. And now we have our instructions for how to figure out what the fourth roots are. So here's our r and our value of theta. Let's go ahead and find these fourth roots. So our first contribution everywhere is going to be the nth root of r, which is the fourth root of root 2. Root 2 is 2 to the half, so this will be 2 to the eighth. Or in other words, our fourth root of r is the eighth root of 2. Okay, now the question is what are these angles? Well, according to what we developed, we take theta and divide it by 4, and then add multiples of 2 pi over 4. Recognizing that theta is pi over 4, these be all become pi's over 16's, wherever we have the theta over 4 involved. And if we simplify it in this case, we get these four complex numbers right over here. Now, I want to make a point about these numbers. So we notice there's a scaling, and that scaling is by taking the nth root, or in this case, the fourth root. And the first vector is in the same direction, but it cuts the, hang the angle in four. So the first vector looks something like this small vector right over here. And then now, the rest of the vectors, because they're all equally spaced, we can think of drawing axes so that we have these four directions, and we'll have that the vectors sort of emanate in these four directions with the same magnitude for each. So a cool way to find the nth root of a complex number that exploits the polar form to get things quite directly. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on future videos.